Now that the fracture is complete, let's head on to the physics module. Under physics module, we have ground, RBD, kinematics, and parents. So let's add a ground to begin with. And there we go. A ground has been added. And this ground interacts with the chunks and the particles for collisions. And let's make the ground invisible. And let's head on to, and here you can actually see all the parameters for rigid body collision and particle collision for the ground. And if we head on to the RBD tab, we have rigid body world settings and we have the rigid body settings as well. And one important note is that we are using convex hull for the shape, as this is the shape that actually takes less computation time for rigid body calculations in Blender. And here we have the uh, physics properties for the chunks, and we have the deactivation settings. And then if you want to join or separate chunks, we can use this. And we have collision collections at the end. All right, so let's select the outer walls as the target collection and let's add rigid bodies. Perfect. Now, as we can see, an icon has been added to the outer walls. Let's do the same thing for the floors as well. Add rigid body. There we go. Let's do the same thing on the columns. Add rigid bodies. There we go. Now let's play the animation. And as we can see, there's a little bit of explosion happening on the outer wall and the floor. And the reason for that is some of these chunks, even though they appear to be non-intersecting with the floors. If we get into edit mode and then we'll see how this appears as a convex hull. And as we can see, this is how it appears as a convex hull. So this shape is intersecting with these chunks. And as we know that intersecting bodies explode in Blender. So that's the reason why some of these chunks at the edges are exploding. So we can work around this problem by using activators and constraints and several other tools available in the RPD lab. And in the physics, we also have a kinematics option where if we switch on the kinematic option, then we have to update as soon as we click on it. Then we can see that for columns, the RBD has not started. Now let's do the same thing for the floors. Enable the kinematic and update. And then on the wall, enable the kinematic and update. Now as we can see, there's no rigid body simulation happening. And let us say we would like the rigid body simulation to start at a particular frame, let us say at frame 20, then we can add a keyframe here as well. Let's say add a keyframe. And there we go. At frame 20, the rigid body simulation starts. Perfect. So let's remove the keyframe for now. And let's also remove kinematic. For all of the target collections. Because we will be using activators to activate the chunks, which is even more interesting. So let's go to activators module. And once we have activators on, then we will come back to constraints. So let's head to activators module. Now here we have several options for the activators. We can either work with deactivations, we can work with kinematics, we can work with constraints, we can work with dynamics, and we can work with the vertex groups. Here, let's choose to work with the dynamic. Now before 
we work with the activators, let's plan our collapse a bit more. So what I'm interested in is this part of the building collapsing and the rest of the building to stay intact. So what we can do is make the rest of the building passive. So let's see how we can do that. Let's press C to select the chunks. So these are the chunks that I'm interested in the collapse. Now the rest of the chunks, let's select them by pressing Ctrl I to invert the selection. And then let's get into physics, RBD. And let's head to passives by selection. And then say, set passive. So all of these chunks are made passive. Let's just check. There we go. Now let's get into the activators. And for the activators, for the source, we'll select the entire scene. Because I want all of these chunks to be activated, not per target collection. So we will go to the top view. We'll say, these are the chunks I would like to select. To work with the activators. Then once we click on dynamic, we'll say add a layer. So all these chunks change color to the same color, which indicates that once we work with activators, we can work with all of these chunks in this color. Now this is the activators uh, module. And here, let's switch on use single activation, which means the first time an activator comes in contact with the chunk, it activates it and keeps it activated. And for the dynamics, we will choose the dynamic animations to start as off to begin with. And then as the activator comes in contact with the chunks, the activator activates the chunks. So just before we add any activators, let's see what this does. So as we can see, the rigid body simulation dynamics hasn't started because we have start off to begin with. Perfect. Now let's add an activator to activate some of these chunks so that the rigid body simulation starts for those particular chunks. So how do we do that? Let's add an activator and we have sphere, cube, and mesh. Let's select cube as an activator. There we go. Here we can see the activator. Let's move it and let's scale it a little bit. And let's move it up a little bit. And let's select, let's say, sixth frame where we would like the rigid body simulation to start. So we'll give it a location keyframe for this activator. And then at frame 48, let's move it down. And give a keyframe for the location. And let's make sure we change the interpolation mode to linear. So the activator moves from top to bottom. Perfect, and activates these chunks. So let's record the activator. And the auto range is switched on because we keyframe the activator mesh. Let's press record. Perfect, and there we go. So this activator cube is activating these meshes. Perfect. Now, as a second step, I would like the, the rest of the chunks to be activated as well around these first few chunks. So let's add another activator and we'll select the cube. Uh, 
and let's include more chunks. There we go. And I would like this activator to start at frame 48. Let's add a location keyframe. And then at frame 96, this activator completes its motion. And add a location keyframe. Perfect. Now let's deselect the already recorded activator and have only the activator that we need to record now selected. And then let's press record. All right, let's see. Now the first activator is activating the chunks and the second activator has started activating the rest of the chunks. So that's the advantage of this activators module and especially this new layers option. Perfect. I think now is a good time to take a look at the mesh visualization options and then there's something called flipbook recording where uh, we can view a viewport render for the animation. So let's uh, turn on the pretty shading and then let's press the flipbook render. And where the images are stored is mentioned in the add on section right here. So we mentioned where we would like to store the flipbooks right here. Perfect. So let's record a flipbook for 150 frames. All right. Let's play rendered animation. There we go. So this is just using the activators and we haven't added any constraints or anything like that. In the next part, let's take a look at the constraints module.